So we are about to try and make some discovery bottles for you. What could possibly go wrong? Hello. Esther, are you going to be my helper? Hi. William, do you want to be a helper? Edie, this is for you. This evening we're going to show you how to make discovery bottles to use in your baby play. Discovery bottles are really easy to make and before I tell you how to make them, I'm going to show you some of the things that you're Hello. going to need. So here we are about to make our discovery bottles. My children need to sit still so that there is no noise and we're going to tell you what we've got here ready to make the discovery bottles. So first of all, you need any plastic bottle. Um, an old water bottle will be absolutely fine. I've got these special ones from Amazon. They've got a nice um, screw lid. When I've finished filling my bottles, I'm going to um, seal them with super glue. So I just put super glue around the rim of the bottle and around the cap and then screw them back on to make them nice and secure. Discovery bottles are used often in baby play and they're also used for toddler time, um, for chill out time or for time out or for children who really like to explore things with their senses. You might hear these des uh, described as discovery tubes or sensory tubes. Um, we're calling them discovery bottles and Esther and William are going to help me today uh, make up some bottles for Edie. Uh, so, you've got the plastic bottles and then we've got some different things um, that we can put in. So, we've got some iridescent snowflakes, which look beautiful. It's quite hard to see. We've cut up some bits of pipe cleaner in different colours. We have got some hammer beads, tiny little coloured beads. You could also um, use what are known as pony beads or any small colourful beads. We've got some sequins. Uh, and we've got some larger sparkling gems. We've got some dried pasta, some different size, different colour, different shape buttons, and some rather lovely different size colour sparkly pom poms. To go with that, we've got some glitter in shakers. We've chosen silver, red, gold, and green. I've got some liquid watercolour paint, you could also use food colouring in your chosen colour and also some oil. Um, I've chosen some baby massage oil, you can use normal baby oil um, or any oil really. Um, that's just to help things move slightly slower in the bottle if you're using water and we have a big jug of water here as well. You can put anything that you like in discovery bottles. Do you two know about discovery bottles? Have you ever seen them before? No. Okay, so the idea of a sensory bottle is that you're creating a toy for a baby or a toddler, a preschooler, um, that they want something that they would like to explore that perhaps they can't explore without the protection of the bottle. So why might we not want Edie to have hammer beads? Because she might eat them. She might eat them. She might put them in her mouth. And so might be, to be honest. So what we can do is, is, put, put, them in is put some beads inside the bottle. Now, do you two know what your five senses are? There's a test for you. Yes. No. Smell. Smell. Hearing. Hearing. Eyesight. Looking. So you can smell things. You can hear things. You can see things. What else? You can taste things. You can taste things. You can feel whole things. Yeah, you and you can, can feel things. things. So this is a bottle that a baby can grab hold of when they're sitting up or they can look at and roll around when they're doing tummy time. These are great for tummy time. They're also great for a toddler to just move around. Now, if we're not really going to be tasting the things in the bottles. So what senses are we going to be using? Touch. We can hold the bottle. We can't really feel the things that are inside because what we can hold is the smooth of the plastic you and the ribs of the lid. You can see what's inside. So really, these are you for developing. You can hear the sound. These are really for developing your sight and your hearing and maybe a little bit of your smell as well. and maybe a little bit of scent but really these are things that are interesting to look at and things that are interesting to hear so for example 
what you might like to put in here, a really simple um, discovery bottle is to make a shaker using dried pasta. So we've got some pasta twirls here and to put them in the bottle and you can fill it half full if you want to with pasta. Screw the lid back on and then you've got something that you can have a look at when you roll around the pasta. It stays in one place. Yeah, so the bottle moves but the pasta stays in one place. You can tip it up by the way and see how the pasta moves. And of course you can use it as a good old shaker. So this one's really good for, for auditory processing. Um, but it's also quite nice to look at as well. And if you wanted to, you could dye the pasta. Um, obviously you would not use pasta with water. Why would you not use pasta with water? It would go all soggy. It yeah. would go all soggy. Okay, so that is a good dry, a good basis for a shaker. Something that's good for listening to um, is dry pasta. Also good to listen to and also with um, a visual element, you can use coloured buttons. Make sure you've got ones that can fit inside your bottle. <laughs> <laughs> like we have them. Oh no. Um, make sure you've got ones that can fit inside your bottle. We'll just bypass that one that's in the lid. And these, again, you can use dry. And they'll make a nice rattling sound. Can we get them out? No, not at the moment. We'll leave it in at the moment. Don't worry about it at the moment because we can bypass it. Now you can use as many or as few buttons as you like inside your... Um, and again, they make a lovely noise. But the thing with buttons is that they're also really nice to look at. Now we are using some plastic coated buttons. If they're covered in plastic, William, what are they? Makes them war... Waterproof. Waterproof, exactly. So you can put them in with water. So we can put some water in with our buttons. I think I've used, used all, in a moment, I think we've used all the tiny buttons that we've got. So what we're going to do now is screw the lid on. Is put some water in to show you how. So first of all, we'll do it without water. So if you just do the lid and you've got some buttons in here, and you've just got a nice shaker. And again, you can roll it. And the weight of the buttons means they stay in one place as the bottle moves. And put all the buttons at the top, all the buttons at the bottom. This is just something nice uh, for children to have a look at. Uh, and the good thing with buttons is that you can also use them with water. If you're adding water to your sensory bottles, you're going to fill your water to halfway. Would have been good to have a funnel here to make the pouring a bit easier. So now we've got our buttons look different because now they're in water. And what? So mm -hmm. then we can put the lid back on. And, try and shaking you can it. see how the buttons move in the water, which gives a really different look. They're floating. Looks it's like really interesting to look at and really good to look at in the light. And again, you can still shake and hear the noise that they make. And, and the noise of the water. You could add some bubbles into here as well, actually, as well, which would be really nice. What we're going to do is add a little bit of oil. Here's the oil, Mummy. Thank you, Esther. So you two are going to have a go at making some of these in a minute. So we're going to squeeze some oil into this one. Let's see what happens. Now, immediately when you put the oil in, you can see the bubbles of the oil on the surface <laughs> of the water. <laughs> we put, okay. Are we going to put some glitter in? Uh, we could put some glitter in, yes. But first, let's see how that's changed. Our... So we're gonna. So what the oil does is slows down the movement because the buttons have to move through the oil, so they travel differently than when they're just in water. Try shaking it, mummy. Can you give it a shake? <gasps> oh! Whoa! <laughs> so the water. What's happened to the water? It's gone white. Got, and the buttons are now sliding on the surface. So the, with the oil, they're sticking to the surface of the bottle. So immediately we've Can got a different the, effect. This let's Can see we add what some glitter, red glitter does. Well. This one first. Hang on, let's do. Let's save the red glitter. I want to do that with the pom poms. So we've got glitter shakers. You could also use glitter glue in the water, which would be really nice. Um, you need to be a little bit careful with this glitter. So Mummy's going to do the glitter. And glitter and oil are a lovely combination anyway. Now try shaking it. Okay. So hang shake. on, let's show the people at home what it looks like at the moment. So when you pour your glitter in, 
it's going to just rest on the surface of your water. And go down when the you surface. um when you shake, obviously the water and the oil mix together. If you leave it, they will separate again, so the water becomes clear. Try so you want to shake. give it a shake. So here you can see the glitter is sticking, but you can still see the buttons. The buttons. So I think with glitter and oil at the same time, it's the key might be less is more. This glitter has now coated the bottle, but you can still see the buttons and you can watch them move. It's really quite difficult to catch that on camera. Esther. Okay, the children are going to have a go at making some discovery bottles. Basically, following the rule of you're making something interesting to look at or something interesting to listen to, after that you can just let your imagination run riot and I'm going to put some links in the comments below um, to some blogs that have shared some really amazing ideas for discovery bottles um, with different themes. So you can make under the ocean bottles um, with blue water and seashells and little mini sea creatures. Um, we're not really going to do any themes at the moment but what I am going to do um, on my blog is 52 weeks of sensory bottles and each week we're going to do a different bottle and as I do them I think I might pop the links in below and we will try and do those as themed. Today what I would really like to do um, is just we've got four bottles here and we're going to show you some dry and some wet effects um, uh, and different bottles. So are you two ready to have a go? Okay. okay so Esther and William are both doing a different sensory bottle. William is putting sequins into his bottle, tiny little sparkly sequins, and Esther in her bottle is putting some hammer beads. And what we're going to do is show you the process of making the bottle. So first they're putting in the dry ingredients, sequins on this side and hammer beads on the other. Okay, so we've got sequins in one bottle and hammer beads in the other. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put the lids on and we're going to show you the effect of the bottles dry. So, who's screwed on ready? Make sure it's nice and tight. Let Esther hold it over here and give it a good shake. <laughs> Can I just... <laughs> so, there's a hammer bead lid for those that don't know, tiny little coloured beads. And as you rotate... Uh, they move around the bottle and again you can show them they can move around quite freely and you could maybe afford to fill a quarter of the bottle with these we're going for a low because Esther wants some glitter in there so that's Esther's and then William give a shake that's a lovely sound isn't it that's a nice softer sound because the can I borrow your bottle because the sequins are made of foil, they give a softer shake and they also travel around the bottle in a different way. We've hidden some gems in there as well, so you could, pl you could play search for the gems inside the sequins. Um, and they again make a lovely sound and you can move them around the bottle. So what we're going to do now is the children would like to add glitter next. So um, we're going to yeah. have some glitter. So what glitter? Sure. William? Red. Okay. So I'm going to help you a bit with the glitter. Yes. Ready? It's going to give you a steady hand. Can I put some of the blue watercolour paint in? Uh, no, we'll do glitter this time. We've got something special with the Are you ready for water? I'm ready for water. Well, first we're going to see what happens with dry glitter. Are you okay there, Esther? Make, make sure it's really tight now because the glitter will fall out easily. It hasn't changed the sound, has it? It's just, they're already coating the bottle. Well, let's have a look, look. So even with a dry bottle, we've got that colour. I wonder what will happen when we put the water in, William. What do you think? Maybe the coating will go away. Okay, let's have a look. Let's take a look. How's yours, Esther? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. It keeps falling out the glitter. Okay, that's because your lid. So this is silver glitter in with the hammer beads, which okay. is really nice. Can you so what we're going to do bit? now, yep. And if you remember at the very beginning, I said that when you, yours is complete, we would put super glue in the lid so that it definitely can't come undone, especially if we're using liquid, okay? Uh, okay, so we're going to add some water now. We'll do Esther's first. Don't nudge my arm. So we're going to about half full. Look! 
Mine's different to one of them. It looks like a snow globe. And what's happened to the hammer beads? They're floating. So we've got some at the bottom and, some, and the some floating on the top. When you add a little bit of water, they'll stick to the side. Don't do anything, okay? okay. Don't do anything. Let's see what happens to William. Mine's already coated, so I think the coating will just go away or, or come back. Or make even more We're going to go to half full. Oh, William, you all just turned red. But I know, again, that was dry. I don't know if you can see... We've got some clinging to the surface of the water and some down at the bottom. And William's glitter is not travelling. It really is stuck to the bottle, which is really interesting. And that was okay. And that happened when it was dry. Right. Not so we need we a had really... foil. First, we're going to see what, how, how it behaves with the water, okay? So we're going to screw the lids on really tight. And, and let's have a shake. And do they act like snow globes? Let's have a look. Yes. Mummy, the coating's gone! I said the coating would go. they're swirling around. I said the coating would go and it's gone! And look, the can I show? The coating's gone. Let's have a look. It has, it's cleared the bottle. And what's happened with Williams is when it settles in the water, the sequins, a very few of them go to the bottom and a lot of them cling to the top. And that's just really lovely to watch. Like oh, fish look. in a magical aquarium. You can turn it upside See, down, all oh, like that. All and so look, the hammer, they don't travel. You know they travel when they're dry, they don't travel when they're wet. Okay. See, look, that's really good. Can so we shall we oil? see how oil changes the behaviour? Yeah, okay. let's see how oil does Can I put it. some paint in it? And we'll do paint next in the next one. So we're going to squirt okay. some oil, okay? One, two, three. Smooth. And for you, one... Two, three. Let's give it a. So this should slow the movement of what's in your water. Let's have a look. And the coating's come back. Let's have a look. And the coating's already come back. The coating has come but back. The gems are moving really slowly now. Can you see they're sliding down the bottle? The gems. Whereas before they were racing down the bottle, now they're sliding. So it's much easier. I can't it even. Look, what's even like? Oh, yours is really loosely done up. You, you have to that, make sure it's really tight. You see that green one there? But you see that green one? This, this one's black. gone a bit murky. <laughs> this one's gone a bit murky. That, that's good for your eyesight, though. The thing with the oil is that it's supposed to slow down the movement of what's in the bottle. But look! Making it, it easier. It sticks it to the side. Making it easier for the baby to track what's inside. I think we've used too much oil, so I think just a drop of oil uh, inside the water. And when we do our 52 weeks of sensory bottles, um, I'll give you a step-by-step -step instruction. You mean on how a to year do of, in, of in a step? We're doing a year of sensory bottles, different ones, oceans, space scenes. Dinosaurs! Okay. And this is our first attempt, so we've gone a bit overboard with glitter and oil. Right, what I'm going to show you now is um, a themed bottle. So what I'm putting in is the iridescent snowflakes. So I'm just going to put a few of those in here. And these um, are very thin, made of very, very thin plastic. Uh, and they look different depending on how you look at them in the light. So you could put lots of these in here. These I just got from a craft shop, um, possibly Baker Ross. Um, I think um, but you can buy all this kind of stuff on Amazon and also they have great stuff for sensory bottles in the pound shop um, so what I'm doing is lining the bottom of this bottle with these iridescent snowflakes let's put a few more in there and then what I'm going to do this is a winter themed sensory bottle we're going to have a look at how it behaves dry. So look, this is a winter rattle at the moment. It's got lovely snowflakes in that are really catching the light as you turn the bottle. You shake them down to the bottom, shake them up to the top, shake them all around. They're lovely for baby to listen to and also for baby to look at. So to add to that, um, what we're going to do is add some water. Whoa. I'm going to fill it half full again. 
half full. And again, we've got some of our things floating on the top and some that have settled to the bottom. Wait, the water's gone through this. It looks like the water's purple, but actually it's not. It's just the snowflakes inside. And again, you can see how the snowflakes behave in the water. And this is really beautiful, catching the light, showing different colours. It's shiny and it's lovely for baby or toddler to watch. The things spin around in the bottle. So you shake it and then baby can watch it. If they're doing tummy time, you can roll it around and again you can see the colours changing in the bottle. Um, it's just a really nice experience for baby, something for them to look at, something for them to listen to, to hear the different sounds. If you are doing a winter themed uh, bottle, you could have uh, some colour in your water. You can use food colouring to do that, or you can try, as I'm about to do now, using liquid watercolour. So I've got some blue here. Don't nudge me, Esther, please. <gasps> it's more black. It's more inky colour. So it's really inky colour. Yeah, it's ink. So you, this would be great for a night sky one as well. And in here now you have to really search. It's hard to see on the film. Um, but you have to really search for the snowflakes inside. And you can see them. Not so well on the video. But you can see. Can you see them, guys? They're floating on the top. Oh, yeah. Aren't they amazing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll take a photograph of this one um, and put it on the blog um, and try and edit into the video as well. It's really. I wish you could see because it really looks amazing. Um, and also, so you could use a little bit less colouring and have a lighter, lighter water. Um, you could also, again, add oil to slow down the movement of the things inside. So this one is watercolour, liquid watercolour, water and some snowflakes. And then for a summer one you could use yellow um, and some yellow beads inside um, and some gold glitter perhaps. And then for spring you might use little flower buttons. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do. Um, but that's our winter bottle with snowflakes and blue water. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got one more to do, which we're going to do um, with just a dry one with some pom-poms. Just um, a dry one. Okay, so do you want to help me post these pom-poms in? Again, in. just go for the smaller ones that can fit into the bottle. There's not okay. these enormous ones. That's not going to fit in. <laughs> yeah, not those enormous. Hence, don't go for massive ones like this. Pom-poms no. are soft though, so we can squeeze them in. Um, and the good thing about this, if you have an older child, in. like B, no, for example. I can't do that. If you have an older child, like B, for example, you could hide something in the pom-poms for her to find. Okay, that will do, thank you. Put the lid on. What kind of sound? Do you think this is going to make a rattle? No. No, because <laughs> they're soft. Let's see. Can you hear it? It's a really nice, soft sound what are we gonna put um, in next? but this is great for tummy time and again if you've got a very young baby and you're putting this in front of them you might choose white and dark blue um, or white and red with a really strong contrast Edie's coming up to three months now so we're starting to introduce a bit more color into her play um, and this is perfect and this is just a pom-pom discovery bottle or a discovery tube and we've chosen pom-poms with a little bit of sparkle um, so what we've shown you today is how to make some sensory bottles. I'm going to write up the tutorials um, on my blog so that you can see them there as well. Esther, you will be able to make some more, but not right now, okay? So, um, these are great for older siblings to make for their baby sister or baby brother. Um, and you can make them dry, such as with the pom-poms or the hammer beads to get a really nice rattling sound. Or you can add water and oil and food colouring uh, to make a liquid sensory bottle. Um, and as I mentioned before, I'll put all the links down below. Um, and also add some photographs to show the different things that we've been experimenting with with our discovery bottles. And we are going to be bringing you one discovery bottle um, a week uh, as we go forward. So thank you very much for your help, you two. If you enjoyed making discovery bottles today, you want to make a frozen one? Okay, we we're going to go um, and have a play with these while Edie's asleep and, um, and we'll be back with some more sensory bottles and more baby play very soon. Thanks.